Hey guys, we have Rugged Ridge's rear bumper with Swing Out Tire Carrier for your Jeep JL. I'm going to show you how to install it. So now we've already removed the bumper from this JL, but we need to discuss some things that you need to retain. One is going to be this camera housing plastic thing with these studs that are actually going to mount the wheel through the backing plate on the bumper. You're going to need to retain the camera, of course, if you have it. And then there's three really small Torx uh, screws that you don't want to lose because those are going to be hard to find. So keep that set off to the side as you remove your OE bumper. And then we've got this backup sensor harness. Um, it's really easy to remove. It's just all these plastic pins that you're just going to have to fiddle with an um, interior removal tool and pull all these pins out of the back of the frame. I would cut all of these off. We're going to put other bumpers on this Jeep and we may put the OE bumper back on, so I'm going to leave those on at this time. Um, and when you get your sensor, this is what you're looking for. There's a little rubber o-ring that's on the sensor just leave that on there that's fine but ultimately this is what the sensor needs to look like and this is what we're going to install into the bumper so now we're going to take our sensor it's just going to fit in this little ring like so this is just a backing plate with this cutout so that it clears the sensor plug and then we're going to use a washer on the bolt and just feed that from the inside put on the flange nut and if you guys aren't running sensors um, I've actually seen a couple of people get some of the generic pin spot lights and you can hook up backup lights to this, which is kind of cool. Um, but this is designed for the sensors. And if you don't want to do either one of those, the kit also comes with a plastic plug that you just pop into the hole on the outside of the bumper so you don't even really see it. So now that we've got the hardware installed, just start getting it finger tight and then just grab some 10 millimeter wrenches and tighten this hardware up. And then once everything's tightened up, the sensor should be secure. Now we'll do the other three. So now on the passenger side, this bottom location of the frame does not have these threaded inserts. So there's this nut plate and there's this long finger here that needs to go toward the front before we put the bumper on. And there's a hole in the side of the frame where you can actually get your finger through and help adjust it and hold it in place. Once we get the bumper on, then this hardware will just go through the bottom and fasten like so. And then like I said, there's these threaded nut inserts on the side of the frame already from the factory. And these are just going to go on the side. So now I've got a friend that's going to help me pick this bumper up and install. It's just easier, and we're going to make sure we hold this harness above this little curve right here. The frame is going to slip in there, and you want this harness above the frame to help protect it. And then I've got a microfiber on the hitch just so that we can sit the bumper on there. And you'll also notice that we have some tape on the body. This is just to help protect everything so that we don't scratch it up putting it on. All right, now I can install the hardware in that nut plate we put on the passenger side of the frame and the side. So this is that hole in the side of the frame where you can stick your finger through and then you can line the nut plate up we spoke about earlier. You can see it right through the bottom of the bumper. And then install the hardware. See these holes on the side.
So now I'm going to tighten this hardware on both sides on the bottom. Just snug it so that the bumper sits nice and level to the frame. And that's your adjustment for being level. And then I'm going to push the bumper like you were pulling it from the back of the Jeep, like if you were going to recover from the bumper, so that that way it's adjusted all the way out, so that when you go to recover the Jeep, there's no slop in between the bolt and the bracket holding it to the frame. So now we've got everything lined up. We'll tighten this on the bottom first. Watch out for this exhaust tip because it will cut you. And then do the sides. And then now we'll go back over and we'll repeat the same process on the driver's side. So now we're on the driver's side and this is that backup sensor harness. So there's just a white clip here that you have to pull out in order to unplug it. But you'll hear it click back in, make sure that's pushed down. And depending on what you got going on over here, you're just going to zip tie this up out of the way. So now we're going to install the tailgate plate. Just going to slip over the vents. We've got the button head hardware. that loose just so we can adjust it for the other points. So the kit's also going to come with two of these urethane bumpers. You're just going to put the button head through there. There's already a washer down in the bumper. And one is going to go here and then one is going to go on this bottom right hand corner. So just thread that through the urethane. Now on these urethane bolts, you don't want to over tighten them. You just want to make sure that that rubber bump stop is fastened solid to this tailgate plate. That's what's going to create the preload on the swing out tire carrier and we'll adjust that with this rod in and that's what prevents all the vibration. So the next thing we're going to do is install the swing out carrier onto this bumper spindle, but I want to explain a few things. Once we install all of these pieces, this rubber seal is actually going to sit on that flange. And that's what's going to prevent the grease that we pack in these bearings from during the heat in the summer, um, pouring or dripping out the bottom of this and leaking. And it's also going to prevent water from getting up inside of this hub assembly. 
then the bearing is going to go on the bottom with the taper up like that. So the top bearing is going to go in with the taper facing down. Then it's going to get this flat washer castle nut. And then once we get it torqued right, we're going to get this cotter pin in there so nothing vibrates or comes loose. Some of these, we've had to remove this EDP coating off of this spindle because the bearing doesn't want to fit. If you do, it's fine. We're going to grease all of that. It's not going to void any warranties, but it should, once everything's done, just slip right over the spindle. It should be kind of a tight fit. You don't want to um, be so tight that you're beating this bearing down. So let's go ahead and grease these bearings and then we can install the carrier. So now I'm just going to use a grease gun. and I got a buddy that's going to go ahead and pump some grease into the back of this bearing. Yeah, just keep, keep going, keep going. Yep, keep going. You kind of can't have too much in there. Keep, do a little more, Anthony. All right, that's good. Cool. Now I'm gonna pack this in as much as I can and spin the bearing. There's no real clean way to do this. If you put a little bit of grease and your palm here and you go like that, you can take that grease and you're shoving it through that open side. So put some grease in there. A lot of it. That's good. Cool. So there's, like I said, there's not a really clean way to do it. They make a couple of tools that you can use to grease bearings, but you gotta keep in mind, this is really made for a wheel bearing and the carrier is not gonna be spinning at 50 miles an hour. We're just going to put a spare tire carrier on it and a spare tire, maybe some accessories. this inner race here and trying to spin this so that you can see the cleaner parts of the bearing showing and just making sure we get grease everywhere. And we'll do this to both bearings and then we'll put the bearings in the carrier and then install the seal on the bottom of the carrier. So now these races should be installed in the hub but if they're not and they come loose in your hardware pack they should just get pressed all the way in down to this first step and it should look just like that. Again, if you need to remove some of the EDP coating on the inside to make that race fit properly, that's fine. Once you grease everything up, this stuff isn't going to rust in here anyway, and it's not going to avoid any warranty at all. And this seal is going to go in with that flat side facing out. If you guys are in a lot of mud or water, if you want to put some RTV in before you put that seal around there, you can too, but it should seal up fine. So now we need to remove this rear tail light just to put the carrier on, makes it easier. Just gonna pop this plastic cover off right here, and then there's a plastic bolt down in there we're gonna remove. So this is just a 10 millimeter bolt. You just need to hold the light because you'll feel the light get loose. And that's it. Now we've got a light coat of grease on the spindle. And once we go to put it on, we're going to make sure we get that bearing. Should just slide over, get the seal down. Then we're going to install the bearing on top. We'll put that flat washer, the castle nut. So now the goal is just to get this castle nut with enough preload on the bearing so everything's tight and secure. And we're going to get this cotter pin through the hole that's on the spindle. So I can see it right there. I'm going to go ahead and go. And I keep lifting up on the carrier. I can feel it. Because you're squeezing that grease in there too. As soon as it starts to get tight. That 
that should be perfect. And we're going to bend that cotter pin back. So now we're going to install the spindle cap. Again, if you guys find yourself in water and mud a lot, you can put a little RTV around there. And it just goes in like so with this Phillips head set screw. So now we're going to install the carrier side tire bracket. This is going to fit on here like so, but before we need to put these bolt plates in, so we're going to fish these in from the back. This is where your height adjustment comes from. I'm going to start all the way to the top. This just depends on what size tire you guys are running. And using a 19 millimeter socket, I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down. So now we'll install the wheel stud bracket. We're just going to leave this hardware loose. So now with this hardware loose, just adjust this out. Pull these bolts out to the side. And this is that OE piece that we retained from the factory carrier. This is going to slip in behind like so. And then this is the hardware that held it to the OE carrier. And I'm going to snug this hardware up, but I'm going to leave it so that we can adjust it because we're going to check the backspacing on our wheels. So now we have an aftermarket wheel, so I'm going to go ahead and adjust this pretty much all the way in. If you're going to use OE wheels, you're going to have a different backspacing, and that's what that adjustment's for. So now we're going to fish the backup camera wire through the back of the carrier. The camera won't fit through here. And then it just plugs in. And then these three really small screws that you took special care of to not lose because they're 
unobtainium and you'll never be able to find another set. Once we go to put our tire on, this is the camera housing. This is just gonna slip over these lugs, sit just like that. And then actually having the tire bolted in place is what's gonna keep that there. And this is just here to protect the camera. So now this is a stainless rod in. So I put a little anti-seize on there. If you don't put anti-seize when you put this together, if you ever need to remove it and take it apart one day, it's gonna pretty much fuse together and you're gonna be mad. So use a little bit of anti-seize. And then what I'm going to do is adjust this back down so we make sure we get a little bit in there too. And this is just a jam nut. Once we get this final adjusted, we're going to tighten this jam nut back down on the rod end and that's going to keep everything from vibrating. So now on the tailgate plate side, we're going to install the misalignment spacers. We got a bolt with a washer washer and then the nut and I'm going to actually leave this loose for now because we're going to have to make a couple adjustments on this make sure your camera wire is above that rod end and then it should come through the carrier side So now this urethane bump stop is supposed to come in contact with the carrier about three inches before the tailgate shuts. And that preload is what keeps all of this from vibrating. So I need to undo that bolt that I just did on this outer rod end, and we're gonna adjust it out a little bit until we get the adjustment right. So now I've got this adjusted right where it needs to be. We're about three inches before the tailgate shuts. You can feel that these rubber bump stops come in contact with this carrier. And when you have the weight of the tire on there, that's what's needed to prevent vibration. So now I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up all this other hardware. So now over time, these urethane bump stops might crush in a little bit and you may feel like you need to adjust that and that's what that adjustment's in there for. But that's what you're looking for right there. So now we're gonna tighten up the jam nut. These are just 19 millimeter open end wrenches. So now we'll put the tail light back in. And the tail light is on a spring, so it's supposed to move around a little bit. So that's perfect. 
So now if you open it all the way, it should open right to 90. That urethane bump stop comes back in contact with the carrier and that's to help prevent it from over opening and ripping out the factory detent because it's not that strong. And now we can go ahead and put our tire on. So we'll put our camera guard on. We'll lift the wheel back up. So now whatever lug nuts you were using, you just reinstall. And we have a tag bracket on the top, so that's what these are for. So now those wires you guys see hanging down there are for the third brake light and the tag bracket. There's a couple of different ways you can handle that, so I'm not going to address that in this install. And then torque these to spec. There you go. Really easy install. You can do it in about two hours in your driveway with a buddy's help. If you have any questions at all, make sure to give us a call or visit us online.